good afternoon and welcome to Watts Hill for game 16 of Super League 2000. Today's misses are the Salford Reds and they're coming off a great win last week against the London Broncos at the Willows. The Bulls, of course, had a superb win at Castleford last Friday or the week last Friday when they notched up 39 points in a bruising encounter against the Tigers. The ideal conditions for rugby league is a breeze blowing down the field to our left. That's into the Bulls faces that they will be kicking off. But the field taking us toward nice and firm. They've had some rain, but it's dried up nicely today. Run through the teams quickly for you. The Bulls have a full pack. Henry Paul on the wings. Brooker and Vicona in the centres. Naylor and Price, the halfbacks. Robbie Paul and Deacon, the front three. Fielding, Laws and McDermott, the back row, Peacock, Forshaw and Mackay. Coming off the interchange bench for the Bulls will be Wilkinson, Parker, Smith and Radford. Salford have the fullback Weber on the wings, Pinckney. And a fire at the centres, Nickel and Tassel. Halfbacks, Allroyd and Blakely. The front row, Baines, Alka and Makin. The back three, Heighton, Faimalo and Wainwright. And coming off the bench... For the Reds will be Duffy, Littler, Lee. <laughs> Napolitano. And today's match referee is Mr. Robert Connolly. We are with us, our old friend uh, Steve Robottom, who's going to call the game for Salford. And just as we hand the mic over to him, the sun comes blaring out. Yeah, always a tough game over over at the Oddsall Stadium. Salford, though, will be, uh, I think, have a little boost of confidence from their best Super League victory last week against London Broncos. Although, with an early knock-on, um, it'll give the uh, Bradford Bulls the uh, initiative. But some changes today. There's no Nick Pinkney. There's no Paul Southern. And so, uh, certainly on the bench, it's looking as though they're going to call on their, their reserves to, to hold their own against what is obviously a formidable Bulls outfit. Yep. <coughs> The Bulls, of course, one or two players out. And this is unusual, a spread from the scrum as Naylor takes the first one in. Tassel struggling with him, big fella. Deacon will turn Mackay in. Mackay comes on the angle. Just drags that defence in, pulls it across before the spread goes on. Fielding now, he'll have a charge for the posts. Almost gets through. Dragged down by Alka. Spreads on now, Deacon, as Henry Paul running dummy for sure. Steps. Oh! Didn't realise that uh, they dropped off in there, Mike, for sure. Had a chance to go on. Henry Paul running across the line, looking to develop it. Finds Peacock. Peacock's going for the line. Four points. First attack for the Bulls. And Henry Paul, once again, mesmerises the opposition. By drifting across the line, Steve, he does that so often. Looks as though nothing's going to come of it. But it's so loose and so deceptive that when he does upload, as we saw there, Peacock was stood when he took the ball, but the defence was scattered. Well, it all looked too easy, you've got to say, if, uh, if you can score that quickly in the game. And not only that from the Salford point of view, uh, Jason Weber, who's standing in for Gary Broadbent at full-back, look as though he took a knock from uh, Peacock as he was going in to score. Yeah. <laughs> trying to make Steve eat his words there with his kick is capable of kicking these but he drags that one across the front of the post so it's 4-0 with <laughs> with uh, three minutes of the game gone and uh, a pretty poor record the Reds here over the last four seasons Steve the last four visits to this ground I don't think they've uh, held the buzz within 40 well I regret to say I have to go back to uh uh, oh, crumbs. Was it the uh, the late 70s that I can last remember coming over for an evening match and seeing Salford win here? I mean, they have won since then, but you're right. Against these two teams, whether it be at the Willows or here at Oddsall, uh, by and large, the result has gone the way of the Bulls. So, Henry Paul catches. He's fielding. Brings it out to the 15. Deacon with McDermott. McDermott just running a little bit wider off the rook. Normally comes 
tighter on the pass. Mackay inside to Farshaw. Farshaw coming in field, winding up, going for the gap. Good running. Laws takes it short side. Naylor. Naylor's got space. Oh, Naylor comes. Good tackle from Weber then. Is that Weber? Oops. Oh, Weber's gone off. That's Tassel's gone to full back. Superb tackle on the big fella, Naylor. Oh, and that was a fortunate bounce for uh, the Reds. Well, Tassel did exceptionally well then. Big lump of a big lump of a lad is Naylor when he's on one full run. Well, we all know that uh, Scott Naylor is one of our Salford stars, as along uh, as was Nathan McAvoy in uh, seasons past, and indeed Hudson Smith was last season. Uh, but Tassel certainly stuck to his task then. Great pace from. Naylor, he's such a, an elusive runner, so deceptive. Great pace, very difficult to put him down. But now Salford just working it steadily. Right way and right onto Stuart Littler. Oh, and Salford get rid of the ball, drop it. The referee saw it's the knock on, and that was one pass unnecessarily from Stuart Littler. And um, well, Salford made ground from the 20 into the uh, Bulls 40, but without any any real conviction at that point and one pass too many surrenders possession again can't afford to do that against the Bulls well no and it, it is quite warm this afternoon Steve as you've already mentioned uh, you need to conserve as much energy as you can and you don't conserve energy turning the ball over you need every ounce of fuel you've got to stop these Bulls because once they get it all on they are awesome Lost to the short side, for sure, in the game early. Just testing that short side. Deacon now. Deep ball to Robbie. Robbie turns Naylor inside. Oh, good combination. Deacon did well. Read the play. Spotted Naylor's angle of the run. And came in for support. And that's a silly penalty to give away. And always a fire uh, uh, making. Just... Meekin just had a little tug, spoilt the tackle, McDermott goes for the line, takes some stopping, there's four men all of him, half a metre short of the line, Fielding will run foil, oh no, well you won't expect it. that wasn't Stuart Fielding, I thought the ball was going behind him, moves on now, ball goes to Deacon, Deacon steps, he spins, oh, just lost his foot in, Salford had read the play, came out, cut the pass off. Robbie to Henry, inside. 2-5 mile or. So, chance for Salford to bring the ball out. And it's, it's tough yards against the Bulls there. Oh, I'll say, but uh, every, every time Bradford don't, uh, don't score, I think Salford will look on it as a bonus, particularly from uh, inside the Salford 10 metre zone. The defence doing just enough and find Marlow sharp enough to take that interception pass. And with the penalty, Salford have the first respite that they've had in this game. Something like uh, eight minutes into it and the chance to attack with six inside the ball's half. So can Salford uh, just uh, spring a little surprise early on? 4-0 down, Joe Farmarlow on his own. Forcefully put down by Fielding. And this is uh, Paul Heightened working his way carefully to the 20. Malcolm Olker going, releases the ball nicely. Blakely's in the line, and so is Nickel. No way through for him, but Salford force themselves into the Bulls 20. Blakely's there again. All right, with a little kick through. The chasers are there, the runners are there. Kicks back, comes back to the Salford to play, play it on and stay in the field of play. Another six for the Salford City Reds. Stuart Littler's going to go on his own. Cross field, across field. Crossfield releases the ball to nobody. But it's off and make it his. And Salford running strongly. And Field is going for a super try. That was, I think, Nickel over that side with great strength. The pass from Littler. The Bulls just laid off him, let him run across the field. The pass didn't go to anybody in particular. It bounced and sat up. And Jason Nickel. Jason Nickel made it his and forced his way over. And the Salford's first attack. They've put their own try on the board. 4-4. Good response, that Mick, from the from the Salford City Reds. All right. Ah, oh, Little drifted across. Well, he did well, because he kept alive and just dragged everybody out of uh, line. 
Uh, and that's so unlike the Bulls to give a, a try up easily. So I was just saying before, Mick, that we, we were spared not here in the coronation seat theme this time when the Sulphur City Reds came out, but it looks as though you've got your own trumpeter out there playing it for us now. But um, let's hope that if it needs a Salford try to play the Coronation Street theme, let's hope we hear it a few more times this afternoon. We'll be delighted with that. As Steve Blakely is just taking his time to uh, set this ball up. It's only uh, 12 metres out and certainly within Steve Blakely's capabilities. As he strikes that nicely, successfully. Seven out of seven for him last week in Salford's 42-26 victory over the London Broncos and Salford have the early lead something like 11 minutes into the game six points to four as the sun shines on the pitch is looking absolutely first class isn't it Mick a and a super stadium it gets better every time you come over here well that's just the benefit of summer rugby people forget that that we play on good surfaces now all through the season so it goes quickly Salford slow to get this ball under control and as a consequence the Bulls chase He's good enough to put, uh, I think it's Neil Baines down deep inside his own 10. It's a long way for the Reds to go. So Tassel has a little goal from uh, up from now, playing full back. Jason Webber injured in the very first attack. And Fai Marlow forcing his body forward, trying to find a way through. Malcolm Olker gets on to Jason Nickel out there, can't find a way around the outside. Salford on the 40. Blakely with the kick into space. Oh, held up perhaps. But, but Wainwright makes it is. Now the chase is on. You would expect the Bulls men to get there first. They do, but a great chase from Wainwright with support. And uh, good, good attack from the Salford City Reds. Yeah, good thinking. Set that up well. Bulls were set for the 40-20. It was a chip over the top and Salford regained it well. So the Bulls looking a little bit out of sorts at the moment Vicona throwing a wild ball then on the second tackle in his own red zone it's just Peacock Naylor nothing on there for Naylor too much uh, red traffic Deacon's kick charge down, it's all on, it's a charge down, it's Henry Paul. Does well, start again. Well, for me that would have been uh, all on. Yeah, I'd have said so, I'd have said so. No attempt to catch the ball, yeah. He played his hand there, but he didn't no attempt to catch the ball, it's a charge down. Mackay almost through with that step Bulls getting a roll on now Fielding comes makes good yards short side Henry into Mackay to Price good tackle from Pinkney did well kept with Leon Price and brought him down cleanly he had to do little chip through from Deacon Robbie on chase, a fire picks up. And the Reds, some more tough yards to do. And that's the second time that the Bulls have, have given the position away. That's what brought the try last time. They gave the position away, they got downfield, and it's silly stuff, is that? Well, it, it is, but maybe just it's one of the tactics when you're deep in your, in your opponent's half. There's uh, still a long way for them to go. But another good defensive... Well, it wasn't just one six, was it a second six that they were into for the Salford City Reds? And, uh, and they managed to keep the uh, balls out again. Neil Baines trying to uh, release that ball, but three balls put him down. Wainwright had a good part in that previous attack, kicking ahead. And nice release of the ball, reverse of direction, Salford coming back. Perhaps Craig making wasn't quite ready for that, but good handling from the Reds. Looking to move the ball when they can. Malcolm Olker will do that. Blakely's in the line, goes out nicely to Otify Marlow. Perhaps not expecting it, but the ball's up quickly, put him down. That's the fourth one, one more in this set of six. Salford, Malcolm Olker, no, that's not. That's uh, Jason Nickel just ambling forward into the uh, Bulls 40. 
It's the last one. Wainwright, dummy half. Blakely, that's the high one. How the chase is going to go for it. Oh, well taken. Easily taken. An important tackle. Because in broken play, anything's possible from these pacey men from the Bulls. Yeah, great take from Jason Brooker. Been in outstanding form all season. Here he goes again, winding up. Face Deacon, Deacon, quick ball to Price. Price with space. Oh, he had McKay with him. Needed one more offload. Inside to Fielding, Fielding. This time finds Price again. Well, we're just having a cup of tea in a wood by. And done his running. My corner. Tackled by Pinkney. For sure. To McDermott. Good tackle from making. Last tackle. Short side attack again. To keep pushing the ball onto the left. And Tassel did well then. Under pressure. Yeah. Well, James Lodge keeps uh, testing this short side. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and in the, their six. Bradford went from their own 20 deep inside the Salford 20 and uh, Salford holding out well they're making the tattles count so far although they're on a little bit on the back foot and uh, we're starting to see perhaps a change on the Salford side not so sure at the moment if it is John Duffy who's going to come on but no for the moment the play's, play continues Brooker brings the ball in field this is a good position for the Bulls to start from just on the Reds, 30. McDermott. Powers it in, offloads. Good offload is that. Now Deacon to Mackay. Laws. Goes forward. This is far short. Far short. Gets one away to Laws. Fielding did well. Wasn't a good pass from Laws then. Well, did well not to panic. This is straightforward pass for Peacock. The Bulls playing the power game. Everybody coming running. Just too many runners there for the defence. And uh, Salford, well, just didn't pick the right one up. No, they were moving forward, but there were three men moving forward for uh, for only one man and left left the runner free. Eight points to six, rather, and with a successful conversion that time, uh, extends the Bulls' lead to ten points to six. So Salford will just be taking the time to get back to the middle. They they know like the whole of Super League knows that the Bulls in possession can play some fabulous Super flowing rugby league and Salford will feel I think reasonably well pleased that whilst they haven't stopped them scoring so far two tries to the Bulls at least they've prevented Bulls playing the flowing stuff but a change on the Salford side Joe by Marlow has been replaced early on by Matthew Lee and uh, Salford's strength in depth is going to be tested in the absence of some some key first team regulars like James Smith not here, Darren Brown not here, Paul Southern not here. So we're going to see what the reserves are made of today because that's the strength of the Bulls and the pace from Paul. Great inside swerve. Now can he go all the way? It looks as though he can. The fire's out of it and Paul's under the post. It's that great swerve from distance and in two minutes Salford have turned the game. Peacock again, instrumental in the build-up, but when he got the ball, Paul had meant to beat, he beat them with the benefit of hindsight, with, uh, with relative ease, but that's because he's a class player, he had the pace, he had the skill to go around the Salford defenders, couldn't lay a finger on him, couldn't catch him with his pace, and there he was under post for the second try in three minutes, and making this lead look pretty comfortable now for the Bulls. Good looking try that one, Mick. Yeah, an excellent time. Jimmy Peacock's been in outstanding form all season. His ability to uh, get through that front line defence and offload has been phenomenal. So he's two tries and made one to uh, Jimmy Peacock. And he's really blossomed and matured this season. 
and that's good to see another one of the uh, Bradford youngsters coming through and establishing himself and isn't, isn't Rob, Robbie Paul a fine sight when he's in full floor oh, absolutely both the Paul brothers are, are absolutely brilliant I can remember seeing uh, his elder brother down at the Willows when he was playing for Wakefield when he was over with the Kiwi boys and even then he was a class you know you could see he was a class act and his brother just as good well or would you say well if you can't say better or worse they're just class acts yeah. yes yes they're both star players field him and again making gives a position away we don't need to be doing that I think it's silly that the Bulls should uh, Bulls have given two defensive positions away with little bits of nonsense and making increasing the workload for his teammates stood deep the Bulls Brooker on a little wrap round off laws this is this play for deep it's Deacon Deacon almost through just tried that cut through well tackled by Alka is it Alka? Uh, no it was Martin Lee Matthew Lee I should say Laws goes from acting half mustn't do that Salford Reds mustn't allow any soft space around the rook Deacon to Henry towards one through Fielding's on chase and that's a lost ball unlucky for Chris Tassel under severe pressure there though looks an easy ball to take but you have a load of white legs and white stockings and white shirts coming at you just uh, deflects your red concentration a little bit a difficult ball perfectly weighted from Henry Paul so the Salford City Reds obviously taking the time to get back to the middle they've now seen that in possession the Bulls have got all that power and pace that we know about that super solo try from from Paul that uh, was all of 60 if not 70 meters and now a straightforward determined effort through all the the Bulls players with a final kick too good for the Salford City Reds to take So Blakely gets it going quickly. Get it, get it. As the Bulls work it forward onto the 20, three Salford men needed to make one bull down. That's a good tattle from the Reds. Bulls just happy to work it through their forwards at the moment, the third one, but and ground made. Now they're looking to move it. Now, good quick hands. Salford defence that time. A match for it. Now the ball's looking to move it. Making makes his tattle count. James Lowe's it was. Falls there. And Paul, that's a cross field kick. It's uh, up in the middle for Tassel to take, and that time he takes it comfortably. But the ball's chase such a good one that Tassel can barely make his five or six metres before three balls at first two put him down as Nick Pinkney has his first run with the ball but not very far in the middle of the field and Salford looking a little bit dejected at the moment and bunched in the middle Matthew Lee on Neil Baines he's returned from injury last week plays a big part of the Salford City Reds and Craig Makin he's had a few weeks off but we've got to the 6-1 already and Salford's still inside their own half but now they're moving it well good long pass out on the 6-1 and the tackle the defence from the Bulls good enough for that Salford attack but uh, Salford showing a few signs there promising signs yeah innovative running it on the 5th but they always were going to run it on the 5th but I don't think they put enough work in earlier on Steve uh, to stretch the defence You've really, you've got to whip this ball up against the Bulls. You've got to match them physically in the middle. As Fielding goes. Oh, 
Just one or two people not reading the same script there. Matt Dermott getting in the way initially and just stopping the move. Everybody asking for the ball. Laws into Farshaw, into Deacon. One, one pass too many. As Tassel comes up and commands that ball. Tricky situation then for Salford. The Bulls playing close quarter work and uh, almost went through. Poor execution though, that last pass from Deacon. Naylor. Drags the ball, carry it out. And Salford really need to pick the game up. Get some momentum and offload there. And start again. Barshaw must have played that ball. That's a call from the linesman. That's interference. That'll be a penalty. That's another penalty from... Well... Well, I thought James Laws had played at that ball there, Steve. I'm sure you'd be right there, Mick. But, um, but uh, Salford not really playing in that uh, period in possession with any sort of conviction at all. And... Uh, this is a shame, really, because there are good try scorers among this Salford team. Well, you, you tell us about the Bulls, mate. So, Bulls moving it quickly. It was interesting to see the, the Frans before sort of feeling a bit aggrieved when Bulls didn't score with their six. Expectation levels so high here at the, because they've got men like that. Brilliant. Look at that. Fantastic. Easy at the end of it. Bradford at the end of it. A May was made in the middle of the field and Salford are uh, falling into this trap of now just becoming watchers and they look a dejected outfit and you do fear unless Salford can uh, get their heads up and get the hearts beating about it all again that we could be in for a cricket score this afternoon. Cricket score in prospect Mick? Uh, well I have to say yes I agree with you. I mean, somebody mentioned that at uh, Warrington at half-time. I disagreed with him. Uh, proved to be right as well. Warrington had shown in the first half that there's plenty of football in them. But, but I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not seeing a lot of defence from uh, from Salford, and certainly not their enthusiasm as a level. They're pretty low. They're not hitting this line with any conviction whatsoever. With ten minutes to half-time, so twenty-point lead. It's going to be a long day at the office for Salford, unless they get right back into this game. Fielding. Yeah, that's, that's a nice shot. Eye contact anyway from uh, Wayne Wright. Deacon to Naylor, Naylor's coming field for the run, Laws links up, he's got Farshaw, good football, support here, oh, take a bow Mike Farshaw, Cavalier Rugby, excellent football, brought Naylor in midfield, and made the initial break, Laws linked in. And then Farshaw with that beautiful flip back to Robbie Ball, excellent stuff. They come off other ground, but when they do, they look good. Oh, oh yeah, well, of course they do. They look good, and they are good because that was a brilliant try. It was uh, the gradual build-up. It was Ben just breaking the tackle and making a pass to a man in support, and the final reverse pass really looked splendid because it created open ground totally for Robbie Paul just to run in unopposed at the end of it all. And uh, 32 points to six. Oh dear. We'll have to get the record books at out at half time, but I know Salford's busiest, biggest uh, defeat, biggest, it was 65 points to nil, but the biggest, that's the uh, biggest difference between the two teams. The largest number of points they've conceded in a, is 70 points against Wigan, 70 points to six. And uh, who's to say that uh, the Bulls aren't going to score more than 70 today? Oh dear. Well, you know, nobody, nobody likes to predict those uh, those scores, and, but uh, it's certainly certainly feasible because the uh, the Reds 
just then coming back up to the try look, look dispirited and look, look for Chi too and it, it really is uh, quite warm and and it's much harder to, <laughs> to chase when you fatigue the nays to run another try coming up here Nobby has got Alka chasing him can he beat him, does so that's his third try, hat-trick Alka, well Take a bow, you try your hardest, but you just couldn't tell it with Robbie Paul. And again, that's straight from the kickoff and Peacock again involved in that. He's got to be the man of the match again, Jamie Peacock. Although Robbie Paul scored three fabulous tries, Jamie Peacock for me has been superb. Well, it's one way traffic. The wrong way from the Salford City Reds point of view and uh Heads really have gone down. Malcolm Alka did his best to get back to make the tackle count, make his tackle, and still the club was chasing. But I'm afraid that's all we've seen from the, the Reds. And uh, after a quarter of an hour, that's such a bright opening. But since then, in the last 20 minutes or so, it's really been totally dominant by the Bulls, who just monopolised and dominated. And Paul found his kicking books, adds the uh, extra two, 38 points to six. Oh dear, and we've still got... Oh, still got six minutes to half-time. Well, we're just saying, just before that, Steve, before that kick-off, once again, you, the look disability to Salford, you have to apply yourself to the balls. I mean, uh, cast, cast the other Friday were magnificent, they put the bodies on the line, they really stuck it to the Bulls in every department and, and still came up with 39 points scored against them. And if you don't apply yourself to the Bulls, if you don't get really stuck in, get on top of your game, then they're going to run all over you. Well, that's what Salford are letting them do today. Some of Salford have got some of their reserves on the pitch today. They've not got James Smith, they've not got Darren Brown, whether not got Gary Broadbent or Paul Southern, whether they would have made a difference, I don't know. But what we're seeing is the Bulls now rampant and feeling they're going to be able to score whenever they're in possession. Well, that's better. Some meet in the tackle there, drove McDermott back after first contact a good six or seven metres. Fielding. As far as Shaw goes to the bench, Hudson Smith takes the field. Henry to Leon Price. Leon Price. Horton, by corner, almost through. Struggling now, no line coming up for Salford. Smith, the first touch of the ball. He'll offload if he can. Got a superb late offload. He's added an extra dimension to the Bulls this season. Laws, looking to the short side. Chips won over. Tassel will have to play this. Oh, dearly me. No excuses then. They did well to recover, but no real pressure then. There were nobody within 10 metres of him, but, it, you know, it's not easy to play full-back. It's not, I don't know if it's his normal position. No, he's not, no, he's, no, he's not played full-back for Salford this season. In fact, he didn't even start the game at full-back. So he's almost, at sort of, but even so, perhaps the sun was in his eyes. Perhaps that was it. At least that time um, he was able to rescue the ball, unlike the, uh, an earlier occasion when the try was conceded. Oh dear, now it's all going wrong for them. Even Graham Holroyd slipping. So, Matt Dermott. Again, beating the first challenge. Was making. Peacock. Drift infield. Just accelerates. Well tackled. Matt Dermott. Back to Laws. Laws. Looking, oh, just wanted somebody else. One more pass would have been four points. Radford acting half back now. Spreads it to Deacon. Deacon chips one through. Pressure here for Pinkney. Pinkney did the only thing he could really do is to play the ball dead. It will be another line dropout. Let's hope it's a little bit better one than the last one. Oh, looked a feeble one last time. Yeah, and what what, what bit of breeze there is, is very little, is in all rights favour. That's a better one. Henry Paul, please McDermott. Ever willing, takes the ball forward. Smith comes in on the angle. Oh. 
Short side, Radford. James Laws testing that uh, right hand side of Salford's defence all the time. Spread on now to Deacon, to Robbie, into Naylor. Naylor needed a runner, just couldn't link up with Brooker. Good tackle from Wainwright. Brooker goes away from acting half. Spins, turns. Oh, good running from Brooker. Difficult man to put down. Real jack in a box, Justin Brooker, when he goes to the line. Stronger than he looks. And Steve says woeful defence. And well, you have to say that too. Three or four men had hold of him within five metres of the line. And uh, but really is Justin Brooker really is a difficult man to put down. Yeah, but had to. Uh, well, he didn't have to work that hard for his try in the end. He was just orthodox running forward. And the Salford players just couldn't put him down. Heads have gone and hearts have gone as well today. And that's always sad when you're a when you're a supporter of a team that's not winning. You've got to look for the pluses. You've got to look for the good things. You've got to look for the heart that they've shown. And today we've not seen much heart from the Salford City Reds. It's as if they conceded this one after the first 15 minutes. They know they'd had some... Uh, injuries and some reserves they knew that even with a full strength team this was going to be a difficult match down at the Willows the Salford City Reds I thought really got in the faces of the Bulls and still lost 52-1 Mick was telling us about the Castleford Tigers last week and uh, their efforts counting for naught in the end and conceding 39 points but really to go in not yet at half time and and there's another successful two to go in at half time 44 points to 6 is it's going to rank as one of Salford's worst displays that we've seen for some time and all the more difficult to understand when what we saw last week was one of the best displays in Super League when they beat the London Broncos 42 points to 26 a long way to go in this one so I think it's uh, roll on half time now let's hope these these timekeepers have got a bit of sympathy for the Salford City Reds but 44 points to 6 Oh dear. This yes, day we were we we're talking uh, at the top of the game about Salford not containing the Bulls to 40 points in the last three seasons, but we went the whole game, not not the first half. So Henry to Robbie to Fielding. Fielding winds up. Drives it at Lee. McDermott spins. There goes the whole tip. And it's going to be a, a, a very quiet dressing room, I think, for, uh, for Salford. Yeah. The only guy who will be saying anything will, have, will be hard. I can't see that the players have anything to say. And uh, you don't envy John Harvey's job at half-time trying to lift his team. It's getting warmer as the day goes on. Been, uh, bright, we're in bright sunshine now and the Reds are looking at a tough 40 minutes so join us what should be a nice goal in second half so off we go <coughs> Blakely gets us away the Bulls leading by 44 points to 6 as Fielding comes away gets round one tackle and you wonder what Salford can do, what what readjustments they can make to the defence or to the attitude to get uh, get some credibility out of this game, which is a big ask with a 38-point deficit at half time. Here goes Deacon to Smith. Smith will offload. Does so. Wainwright did well. Henry now drifts through that typical drift kicks over the fires on chase oh fire did well but he's thrust back is he forced back over the line no he just keeps the ball in field of play <laughs> yeah. and poor old Martin a fire called on to do well he did well took him up gets a big cheer well not everybody's favourite player now, but he's been a he's been a great footballer as uh, Martin Avaya, Steve. Oh, absolutely, 
and it's sometimes sad to see these superstars not quite able to achieve their best but I mean that was a great defensive run from Martin Afaya let's not forget that that was a try saving run back from him because the pressure was on the South for City Reds and Martin Afaya came up with the ball and it looks as though he's, he's recovered as well now as Blakely has to put the kick in deep but it's Bradford who can attack from anywhere Henry Mets the piece by corner, by corner, inside Lee. Good two steps from by corner, brings the ball in field. And Salford line looking a little bit dog-legged. Radford tries to wind up, gets nowhere. Spread on. Deacon to Robbie, to Naylor. Naylor cuts inside. Oh, he had a man inside him. Can still go. Well, he's... He made that hard work, the man on the side of him had uh, nailed it. One was Robbie, a simple serve would have caused, uh, would have achieved the task a little bit quicker and perhaps a little bit closer to the post for Henry Paul to kick the goal. But enough strength to overcome the challenge and get back up on his feet. Yeah, it looked as though uh, Martin Afire got him down, but uh, it rolled off him and Naylor was up and over on his own. And uh, Naylor knows some of these Salford players. It's quite a different Salford squad from when Scott Naylor was over at the Willows. Henry Paul. Looking for his seventh goal. This time it's right. He's missed two from that situation. This time he's got one. And the Bulls go up to 50 points. So, unless there's uh, some significant changes in this game, Steve, we may be seeing a record points. Hall in the Super League. Significant changes being if uh, if Salford can get the defence together or if the Bulls ease off. And it's not like the Bulls to ease off. As Smith struggles, difficult man to put down. Stands solid when he's got the ball. Laws to Mackay, who's come on for Radford. Price offloads back to Mackay, back to Deacon. Deacon winds up. Good defence from Lee. Not Lee, sorry, from Nickel. Laws with a little chip. Under pressure, Pinkney and Tassel. This time he collects cleanly. So, first time the Reds have had the ball for a while and bringing it out from their own 20. That's well, the second time this half. They've got a long way to come. Last time they started on their own line, this time they're starting just a metre from the line. Alka. Well, that's good yards for Salford. Picks a good ten up then, Alka. And then had too many of them. Pinkney comes and takes it forward. Last tackle. And the Reds kicking from their own 30 line. Spreading it though on the fifth. Wainwright steps inside. Offloads. Oh. Oh. Paul Hyten doing the half-back work and there's only three chases here for Salford and that's good tackle Lee a nickel yeah on the tackle is Robbie trying to cut through off brother Henry Smith And you get the feeling that uh, the Bulls are overcooking the pudding a little bit. As Wilkinson goes onto the right wing. Naylor comes to the bench and gets a round of applause. Oh, great ball. Robbie Paul inside. Try four. Well done, Deacon. Perfect lines of running from the guy. Superb serve to Robbie Paul.
And I was just saying just before that, Steve, that the Bulls seem to be still playing to the normal pattern, which is to develop the game, to drive the ball forward and make space. But they've nothing to play against. They seem to be falling into the trap of, of assuming that Salford a defensive line, and they haven't. When in actual fact, just what Deakin did then is to run to the line, play as it comes, offload when you can, and it produced a great try again. It certainly was, it was an excellent try, men running off the ball, sucking in defenders and with the pace to create the opening. Salford, 56 points to six down. Um, do we know what the record Super League score is, Mick, between us? I know that Salford's biggest defeat is 70 points to six at Wigan, and um, that may well be beaten today, but what's the biggest Super League score? We'll see if we can find out as the game goes on. But Salford perhaps feeling that they were doing well to contain balls in the first four or five plays of that set of six but at the end of it that extra pace Malcolm Hawk has been rested for the Salford City Reds and John Duffy takes his place and the balls can threaten from anywhere well the consensus seems to be that uh Actually, we're going to have scored uh, 80 points against Workington in the first season of Super League, so that's a long way off. Well, in actual fact, it's uh, 24 points off. And uh, how long have we got to go, Steve? Well, at 32 minutes, it's not... It's not... In, oh, really unfeasible. Back Dermot in with a chance. Oh, give it to Deacon! Again, Mackay, with a simple offload, straightens the play up. And I think Matt Dermott had a sniff of the whitewash, then saw the ball zoom across his nose. Deacon picked up and strode under the posts. And Peacock. Well, there's six points of them, 24, Steve. In, in quick time. So big up goes to the bench for a well earned rest. Parker comes on. And on the 27, Carlo Napolitano. And Napolitano on for Neil Baines. Well, Parker made his first team debut against St. Helens down here, Steve, when the score was 11 10, with five minutes to go, and he came on the field. It's a different situation now. Oh, oh Law's almost getting Brooker away. Play on, says the linesman. Well, that's unfortunate. And trying to pinch the ball back, he's already knocked on. And now Palitano with one of his, his first touches. Yeah, you have to feel uh, you have to feel some sympathy for these. Reds players. No. Robbie Paul to Henry to Price. Smith. Smith goes up the middle. Smith goes up the middle. Is he going for five? Is he going for five? Steps. Keeps alive. Has to offload. Price has got it. Price spreads it. To Wilkinson, is it? No, that's to Parker. Debut try, just been on the field. Outstanding. Hudson Smith offloading. Look for all the world as though Robbie were going to go. And it was.
for the Salford defence. Closed in on uh, on Robbie. He tried to spin, then offloaded. Price did well though. Showed what skills he had. Spread it. Spread a wide ball to Parker, and Parker had a scoot in. Going for his tenth kick. Twelve tries already. Nine goals. And just fades. Is it? And read. So that's Goldberg clocking up, Steve. Well, certainly is one way traffic. You can't think of a threat that uh, Salford have put on, really, for a good half hour. You can't think of a field position. Since they scored the try, Steve says. Blakely. This time goes short. Robert Henry catches. Oh! And James Laws. Almost away. Parker brings the ball forward. Another one of the... Bulls Young's players coming through on that conveyor belt. McDermott. One wonders do the Bulls need that kind of play? There goes Laws. Takes it to the line. Steadies. Almost through. Last tackle. Smith. Oh! Oh, just the first ball from Henry Paul then just missed a couple out. And Smith just didn't quite drag it in. Difficult one to take. Chances now, that's a nice little break from, uh, is it Lee? Yeah, no, it was uh, Chris Tassel, but uh, that's, I think that's the first time. Oh, what on earth is going on? They dropped the goal. What did he do? Oh dear. Well, that's the first time Bradford haven't scored with an attack for a while as well. And what did Salford do? But just drop the ball again. It's not uh, a day for the Salford Reds to remember. Well, the fingers are cold, Steve, because they haven't had it that much. <laughs> just, just not used to the possession. There goes Radford. And Deacon goes to the bench. Oh, that game is through now! Well, that wasn't a good pass. Just took a bump. Oh, well, our cameraman tells it uh, the ball was punched out of McDermott's hands. Well, it's quite legal, one-to-one. -one. Pinkney gets outside Radford. This is fielding. Good work from Pinkney. And Pinkney... Let me just sing the praises of that try. A super score, Martin Afire midfield. Unnecessary this at the end of a super try and Pinkney didn't look as though he got any space to use on the outside at all. But we know there's a man got pace, enormous pace, and he showed it then to go around the narrow side and go over from something like 60 metres out to give uh, a moderate degree of respectability to the score for the Salford point of view and a little bit of respite for them, having been under the cost most of the afternoon. But Strikes it. Yeah, just sneaks inside that left-hand post. Could that be the turning point, Steve? Sixty-six, twelve. The score. And how long have we got to go? Dear me, still twenty-three minutes to go. Sixty-six points to twelve. Henry Paul goes high and deep, caught by Allrod, he shifts it quickly. Pinkney. Yeah. This is making, brings the ball to the line. 
here, Mike. We're onto the fourth tackle now, and we're still inside their own 20. That kick was so good, and Salford under under pressure right from the Bulls uh, attackers right and tacklers right at the start of that set. But the Bulls do that to everybody, Steve. When they get them pinned in their own quarter, they've, they've got to work hard to get out of it, to bring something special up to get away from their own quarter. The Bulls' defence, front-line defence, is it outstanding? Wainwright picks up from acting half. Last tackle, chips over. Lee on chase. And Fielding just happy to claim the ball. High corner. Steps. Gets away from one man, gets away from two. Wilkinson. Henry Paul turns the ball back to Parker. Lowe's, little inside chip for McDermott on chase. And you would think on today's show, and are almost certainly going to come up with another score. So Mike Wainwright uh, is replaced by Neil Baines. Salford ring the changes, but the Bulls with the attacking initiative with Paul running and running. Oh, but it's either it sticks and then it's easy. Nothing to it. Too easy. Yeah, it did look too easy. They're very deceptive that. They know exactly what they're doing. They're setting that up, Steve. That's a, a standard play for the Bulls. The late uh, offload, it looks as though looks as though the Bulls don't know what they're doing. That's what kids everybody. And then Henry Paul just comes in at the late, very last second and the, the line stood and Henry Paul's not a fellow that you can stand against. If you're stood, he's going to beat you. Goal. Ten. So that's the first of the records of the afternoon gone now. This is Salford's highest ever score against in the history of the Salford City Reds. 70 points was the previous highest. Now it's 72. And I don't keep looking at this watch of mine. I'm sure it's going backwards. And there's still 17 minutes to go. 72, so the next thing is if, if the high Super League score is 80, if that's right, then the Bulls are on the way to, to cracking that one as well. We're not quite yet at the biggest marginal difference for the Salford City Reds in defeat. After he gets it going with a short one again, the Salford chasing out that side. Ball goes out and Salford recover it. So something at last going the way of the Salford City Reds from that different kickoff for them. It's a fire, runs across field. And across field, nice pass and a great pass into space for Napolitano. And for once, the Salford City Reds show that they do have a rugby league brain, that they do have ability. And that was a super try. It was the sort of try that the Bulls scored all afternoon. A fire running across field, and he got his pass to Napolitano, time to perfection. And then there was a man, there was a man with great pace from 20 metres out to hold off the attackers. And that's a score that adds a little bit more respectability for the Salford City Reds. It's producing the football. Blakely just drags that across the goal. What about Mount moving Martin and fired in? If you were the coach, well, why not? Yeah. Nobody else is doing out in the midfield. Well, that's, that's, that's true. We've seen nothing from Holroyd or Blakely today in moving the ball, but we've certainly seen Martin and fire coming across field. We saw it from, in fact, we saw it from Stuart Littler earlier on in the game as well, and that led to a Salford try. And that's what the Salford City Reds are missing. Some playmakers in the middle of the field. We thought we'd seen some in uh, last week, the whole ride, and oh, there's a difficult one. Salford make it theirs, though, safely. Blakely steps on it. Okay, making. But the Bulls, defensively, have the same attributes that they have in attack, strength and pace. Nice little offload. Tassel up in the line. No way through, though. The Bulls' defence regroups very quickly. Duffy tries to go on his own. Holker it is who's been rested at the moment. And Craig making. So this is a bright six from Salford compared with some that we've seen. They've got to the last one quickly. But now we're going to see the little kick over. Who's chasing? Well, 
nobody really and it was a comfortable take in the end Blakely only half going for it but making the tackle count with a fire so on their own 10 meter line Bulls looking to find an opening they found that all too easy this afternoon 72 points to 16 coming back inside strong men everyone pace all of them Bulls supporters worrying about Salford being offside Oh, what a nice little short pass that was. And there's that strength and pace yet again. Cover that time, good enough from Stuart Lickler, but only just good enough. The rest of the Salford line gets back in position over this side as the ball comes over quickly. Little kick over. Oh, great take, great take. And an important tackle, lovely play from the Bulls, changing the emphasis all the time. So many options that they're creating. It's the last one. And it's just power and pace at the end of the six in the end. It was power and pace in abundance from the men in support. And yet another try, the 14th for the Bulls. It was easy, all too easy. Salford just didn't have the numbers back. It needs three men to stop one bull. And the one Salford last line defender just wasn't enough to prevent the 14th try. So it's another straightforward one, Mick in the end, it was the little kick over halfway through the six that really changed the things that time and opened things up. Oh, absolutely, but, uh, Robbie, Robbie couldn't get clear and he just adds on the goal points. But a straightforward pick up from uh, James Laws, perfect delivery to Mac McDermott coming on the charge. I mean that, you know, the Bulls score those kind of tries against, against the top sides. I mean, that, that was superb football all round. Absolutely. And Salford stretched just as we thought with a try that it might have lifted the little bit. 11,000. 11,596 the attendance today. That's more than Salford City Reds can get into the Willows. Still four times the attendance that the Salford City Reds had for their victory last week against the London Broncos. So where can Salford go from this? Well, with a full strength team, I'm sure their heads will lift again. They know that they've got to work a lot harder than they've done today. Next match, I think, is at the uh, Wildcats next week. Which is a key sort of bottom of the table affair. As the Bulls recover that one easily enough. And set off yet again towards the Salford City Reds try line. And Salford have been making these first two or three tackles look convincing enough, but they've not maintained it to the six because they've got balls have got so many options so much pace and there it is yet again this is the record score we think for a super league score and the balls making it look easy Salford City Reds Salford City Reds just not able to put them down and we've still got 10 minutes to go so worse than the record score Mickey it's now looking as though we could be heading for a hundred well yeah you do you didn't want to say earlier on that we were going to go to 70, but uh, we're way past that now. That is points game, and Henry kicks the goal again. So I would think uh, you have to feel disappointed that the effort that we've not seen from these Salford City Reds today they may always been likely to lose a game but they really haven't competed around the key areas of making tackles count and you can only hope that somehow somewhere backstage in the dressing room in the preparedness for next week they can get their heads up and carry on at the level we thought we were last week because the Bulls well, it's too easy for them. Big game for them next week against the uh, the Wigan Warriors, and that's going to be a tough one. Is next week's game Mick a title decided? Do you think? Hell no. There's a lot, lot of games to go yet, Steve, and the title won't be decided until uh, the grand finals played in October. You mean for the for, for the for the league leaders? Well, he'll have a big hand in that, but there's a long way to go. Then you know, there's uh, 16, with 12 matches left yet. Three months to go, anything can happen. Inside to Smith. Smith this time can't offload. Hey, 
eight minutes to go and that's untidy play Hudson Smith just getting carried away a little bit lost control of the ball Mr Connolly rolls a scrum and they haven't had too many scrums uh, for this last hour Salford where they've had the head and feed All right. And it's a big challenge from Radford. And another big hit from Radford. Puts a big shoulder on then. Well, the ball's not giving anything up. Not easy enough. This is Napolitani, the try scorer. Blakely tries to bring Heighton running. Heighton shovel back. And again, the ball's. All three players coming with a full load and slamming out and backwards. All right, spreads the ball to Lee. Nickel, sorry. Last tackle. And they haven't gone to many, uh, they haven't gone to five many times in this last hour. All right, gets a kick in. Brooker never took his eye off the ball. Wilkinson, Wilkinson. Oh, this crowd wants to see this lad get away. He's got some toe. Well, that's... A little casual, but then if you've got 84 points on the board, you can afford the luxury of being casual. I can dummies and goes. Blakely, sorry. You might be right. You might be right. Sorry. So Neil Baines trying to go from short range. Still releases the ball. The fire's close. Can't get away though. Bulls don't want to concede anymore. Can Salford find a way through? Oh, oh dear. Isn't it awful? Isn't it sad? All the practicing, all the um, preparation during the week, all the running with the ball, all the passing that they do. And unfortunately, they can't do it on. Uh, on the big occasion when it matters, and that's when you're th three feet away from your opponent's try line. Oh, just five minutes of the game left. The balls scrummage deep in the run half. Henry Paul, well tackled by Tassel. Wilkinson, desperate to get behind that line and then get into some free space. Fielding. No. Bulls playing a, a steady fall. Now Radford. Radford steps. Offloads. Peacock. Peacock. How much toe has he got? Well, he's going to show it. Doesn't need Brooker. Doesn't need anybody. Those two young halfbacks. They've come through the academy side. Radford and Peacock played so many times together. Combined well then. And Peacock with that long. Yardage eating stride makes it to under the posts. Notch the 90 up. Well, Robbie Paul getting the man of the match. But for me, I'd, uh, you, can't, you can't argue with that four, four tries. You could have picked five or six or seven, but Peacock for me was outstanding early on. And a switch play from Allroyd. Kicks it straight to Price. And we did say uh, early on in the game, uh, Steve, that, that the Reds would have to pick the game up and get some enthusiasm going as Brooker comes crashing onto the ball. Otherwise, they would be facing uh, a cricket score. And unfortunately, that's just what's happened. Nobody likes to see it. Nobody likes to see those points posted or those results. But Peacock stepping inside. 
Bulls a threat every time they have the ball in hand. Robbie to Henry. Henry. Off laws. Two. Parker was coming dead straight. Robbie towards one throw. Chasers. Just too strong. Just beat. James Laws to the goal line, to the dead ball line, I should say. Well, the surprising uh, fact about this game is that Salford have scored three tries. Overall, when you look at it, you just wonder how those three tries came about. But all, all pieces of individual play from... Uh, Two from Martin of Hyatt to create the positions for Pinkney and uh, Patola near Napolitani or whatever his name is. Just call him Ice Cream. And, uh, and Littler taking the ball across the line. And not many teams have scored three tries against the Bulls this season. All right, Chips, James Laws. Lost the ball. Play on, says Mr. Connolly. So, a little bit of excitement as we get to the last three minutes of the game. A little chip from Holroyd that he made into his own, although... He can, and then Rafael's doing the same. And the referee said, that's all right. Now, that has to be played. Little is chasing it. Oh, and Salford putting some pressure on the ball's line. So, a fire working hard at the end. It's, um, in many... I mean, the, the kick as a, as a tactic is good as a, as a variation, but... When it's your only when you're only play, it's a bit disappointing, really, and that's all we've seen in this last period from the City Reds. But from the dropout, can Salford finish this game on a high? But when, but when you're behind by 74 points, tactics are quite irrelevant, really, at this team. <laughs> yeah. That's a big, big kick. Who wants it? Nobody. Come. Mm. So the time taken for the ball to bounce was time enough for the Bulls to make it to the halfway line. And push Nick Pinkney back. And Salford. Matthew Lee just working it forward. Holroyd gets rid of it quickly. Politano gets released to Holroyd. Good long pass out. Heighton comes back inside to trouble though. The reception committee. Neil Baines takes it forward. Oh, but passes it very nicely to uh, to one of the Bulls, and then uh, one of the Bulls give it back to the Salford City Reds, and so the Salford City Reds go forward again. Oh, Portano drops it, and um, well, there's not a lot you can say really, is there? Our Bulls going to finish on a high? Are they going to get to the hundred? The crowd want them to. They're sensing there's a chance here. Because there's a man with great pace on the outside, with praise, and good tackle, oh, ball goes down, and the referee says that went backwards. So are the ball's going to make it to the 100 now? Two minutes to go, I reckon. But we've seen the ball scoring more of two tries in two minutes before. Look at that power, look at that strength. And the ball's still going forward. Yeah, good inside, good pass. Still the ball, still the pass. And now there's a clear run to the line for somebody. Salford tackling to Snowco. It's that young man Wilkinson showing his pace off the mark. More than good enough to outpace and outstrip the Salford City Reds defence. And 94, 96 points to 16. A Super League record score. And Salford the task of holding out for what I think is another two minutes to avoid conceding the century so i was there when salford lost 70 points to six and i'm here new record score 96 to 16. so what can the bulls take front take away from this this performance might admit that they didn't already know <coughs> well there goes the hole to steve 96 points to 16, an 80 point lead. But what they've taken away, I mean, the Bulls now will be looking forward to next Friday when they play Wigan. No disrespect to Salford, what you have to say, it wasn't a bruising game. Hasn't taken a lot out of the Bulls. 
the hardest thing they've had to do is run about with the ball. Had not much defending to do. So the Bulls will be going forward next week with a load and bags of confidence. Wigan will know that they've only scored three or four tries against the Bulls in four games. So with 17 tries and 14 goals, a score of 90 points, 96 points to 16 from myself, Mick McGowan, Steve Robot and Mike and Video. Join us next week when we will be hosting the Wigan Warriors and be looking forward to something of a different kind of game.